Good morning, good morning, everybody. This is Jeremiah's J-Man Manero with J-Man Speaks coming to you live and direct from our world headquarters here in the ROC, and we don't stop. That's The Rock. That's Rochester, New York. For those that don't know, now you know. Today is an exciting day because it's Friday. We love all days that end in Y, but especially Fridays because it's A-Team Fridays. Ask the experts anything meaningful Friday. And today we're talking about glossophobia. Glossophobia. And what that means, I actually had to look up what it was called before today because uh, fear of public speaking, right? It actually affects over 73% of people in the universe, okay? So put it in the chat, wherever you're watching. Right now I'm monitoring three different chats. I have YouTube, LinkedIn, and Facebook over here. So tell me where you're watching from, number one, and then tell me on a scale of one to 10, 10 being like deathly afraid, like somebody couldn't drag you up there at gunpoint. How afraid are you of public speaking? Okay, so one would be like, Pew! when can I speak? When can I speak? Can I speak? Where's the mic? Let me grab the mic. That's like a one. A 10 is like, no, please don't make me do it. I can't make I can't do it. You'll freeze right up. Okay, so I'll wait for you guys to comment and see what we got. Mike rides on the Facebook. How are you, sir? Uh, thanks for being here. So what I'm going to do is give you the tools, the tricks, the tips, the apps, the programs. There's no apps or programs. I'm going to give you the tools, tips, and tricks today. Uh, number one, uh, all the different ways that you can speak publicly, just to kind of remind you of that, and then ways to get through it, right? Uh, if you don't know about me, I am a speaker. I've spoken thousands of times, but I also help instructors, trainers, and speakers be better. And then this past week, uh, I, I was part of a leadership conference for the Metro Indianapolis Board of Realtors, where I trained some of their future leaders how to be better speakers. And it really occurred to me that everybody can benefit from this information, whether you're called upon to give a speech at your brother's wedding or you have to speak during a meeting, or somebody's asking for volunteers, right? It's your opportunity as a business person to shine, period. Okay, yeah, Michael Ryan, absolutely. So Mike Ryan says, uh, Toastmasters, even with me being a professional speaker, I got tremendous value out of Toastmasters. I really did enjoy, because it's in a, in a different way, it uh, has you memorize your speeches and they really focus on vocal variety and your filler words and it really can go uh, next level. So Mike Ryan says he's a three out of 10. Okay. Uh, James John from Plattsburgh. James, I feel like you're also a good speaker, but here's, here's what I will say to you guys as somebody who has a lot of experience speaking, that anxiety, that fear never goes away. It never goes away. And in that anxiety, I'll call it anxiety. It's nervousness, right? It's not always fear because you train your body fight or flight. Like I am to the point now where it's like, I still get the anxiety, but it's kind of like hopscotch, right? Where I'm going, you ready? You ready? You ready? You ready? Let's go, right? That's that's the fight where some of you guys are going, ah, and you flight. <laughs> and you run away. Okay. And so it's a matter of training yourself, uh, on, on, first of all, that, that fight or flight response, but did I add Brian Anthony? Hey, Brian Anthony, what's up, man? Harlem world's in the house too. Uh, military train and presentations and speeches. Oh, awesome. Knowing your contact helps tremendously. All right. We're going to go right through it. Let's get right into the content. This will be divided into like four different parts for you guys, because what I'm going to do is chop this up into shorter form content. And if you're not following me on Instagram, what I'm going to start doing with 18 Fridays is they're going to be on here for 24 hours for the playback, and then they're going to expire off of Facebook, and then they're only going to be available under on, on Instagram under a subscription. Okay, we are now offering subscriptions on our Instagram. 
It's a total of $4.99 a month if you want to get access to all the playbacks. That's going to be for the month of November only. After that, I don't know. We'll see. Could be much more. <laughs> Might be $10. Uh, it, and it, it, for me, it's, it's not the money, guys. I just want you to get value out of it. And sometimes when things are free, uh, you're not going to value it. I mean, I, I'm giving you guys so much content every week for free that I would charge if, you know, somebody for a, uh, an event, something like that, thousands of dollars. All right, let's go. Sharing your screen, scaring my screen, scaring my screen. All right, leadership speaks. <clears throat> I'm going to make this a little bit, the square is a little bit too big for me. One second. There we go. Go a little smaller like this, Jeremiah. All right. Fix that. Move this over like this. All right. So this is kind of like a formal presentation, but I welcome you to ask questions as we go, right? Because our objective is for you to have supreme confidence in everything that you do when speaking or when called upon to speak. The plan here in these less than 40 minutes, we're going to go over roles of speaker, nonverbal communication, impromptu speaking, the actual speech, and then we'll give you some additional tips uh, for success next level type stuff. Okay. The why though goes beyond, uh, <laughs> I'll show you just a brief clip of this video. This is probably the worst example of public speaking I've seen. And it's from a politician. Check this out. Ladies and gentlemen of the Stark County Republican party executive committee. Good evening. And thank you not only for your attendance, but for allowing me the opportunity to speak. My name is Phil Davidson, and I am seeking our party's nomination for the position of Star County Treasurer on November 10th tonight. I have been a Republican in times good, and I have been a Republican in times bad. I can't, I can't, I can't, right? So that guy, maybe he had the votes until he opened his mouth, right? Until he started speaking. And just just a tons of thing, ton of things that could be improved upon. I'm going to be nice about it, uh, but you know, voice inflection, his level of uh, his tone didn't match at certain times what the, the way it should be uh, to the audience that's receiving it. And then if I continued it further, you you know, he talks about his favorite quote is, and then he had to go back to his speech and reference and read what his favorite quote was. So a lot of things wrong, but for me, a great speaker equals a great business owner. Any, any way you look at it, like if you're in real estate and you go to your chamber of commerce, you go to your rotary club, you go to uh, anywhere where you have to speak, it could be your committee members, it could be uh, a real estate event, uh, but any business person, when you have a chance to open your mouth, somebody's going to judge you and your business by how and what you say. So always see that as an opportunity to, to uh, build your credibility, right? Build who you are. Because on the, the adverse side of that, there's been times where I'm like, oh, I really admire this person. I'm really excited to hear them speak. And then their speech or the way they spoke let me down. Right? Afterwards, I'm like, oh, I don't know if I can follow that person uh, as a leader or as a business person or even do business with them. Right? I feel like how you do anything is how you do everything. So if somebody shows up, and you knew you had the speech, and even if it's only a five-minute speech and they show up and they don't have any notes, maybe they memorize it, but then they get there and you can tell that it's disorganized and they're going off the cuff and they're just really rambling on. Guess what? To me, that tells me that their business is disorganized and off the cuff and just rambling on, okay? So your role as a speaker, you have a couple of different things you do. You can either share information, right? You can teach, demonstrate, or inspire, Right, if you're teaching them something or educating them on something, you can influence them to do something. And then the last, the last one is to entertain or engage. Right, I was the MC yesterday for our local board. Uh, we had it's called Reboot Tech Conference and Trade Show now, and my my goal there as an MC was to entertain and engage. I did not have to educate in any way. Did not have a formal presentation, but that's still a, a different skill set and you have to pay attention to different things, right? As an MC, I'm looking at the crowd, 
I'm looking at the energy or feeling the energy. You can't look at the energy, but I guess I can after a while. I see the energy waves coming off of people. Uh, but, you know, I got to feel that and then I have to engage and add and infuse energy and do the things that I have to do because that's what I'm hired to do, right? There's no education there going on. So let's start with as business people or if you're in real estate uh, or if you're a sales manager or you're a team lead or anything like that in any business on the planet Earth, right? There's meetings. And nowadays it's Zoom meetings, but you, hey guys, how many times have you hopped in your car, gone to an in-person meeting and you're like, damn, that could have been an email. That could have been a five minute Zoom. The time that I invested to come here wasn't worth it because the meeting was not ran efficiently. The meeting wasn't ran in a way uh, that made people feel good about taking time out of their schedule. So if you're seeing challenges with committees or organizations that you're, you're a part of, part of that is the leadership and part of that is the person who's running things and speaking and facilitating at those meetings. So there's a formula that we use and we didn't invent it. Somebody taught this to me when I was 19 years old. The RIM philosophy for, re for meetings. Recognition, information, motivation. So Mary Kay says, there are two things people want more than money. Recognition and praise. Right? Recognition and praise. Mary Kay uh, made bajillion dollars <laughs> from this. Right, you know, I'm the Mary Kay uh, level two person. Oh, I got the Mary Kay caddy. Right? You know how much how much people had to sell to get that Cadillac that, which was a lease of like, you know, maybe it cost Mary Kay 500, 600 bucks a month. Right. So recognizing the people. So the beginning of your meeting would look like this. Uh, you know, I might say, we'll stick here on the, on the recognition. I might say, Hey guys, you know, Oh, for our next event, I'm really excited. Uh, we got Brian Anthony. Here's part of it. He actually, uh, we're going to be doing a big event in Harlem and he was nice enough between meetings to go check out three or four venues. And I just want everybody to recognize he took time out of his schedule to do that. And he kind of brought us back a list and took some videos and some photos. Everybody, let's give him, you know, a round of applause. Right. And wait, where's my round of applause? I got to do it over here. I don't have my thing hooked up right now. Here, we'll give you a cash register. That's better. I'm going to go back up to my round of applause. Right. And just recognizing just the little efforts, because when it's volunteer, people are doing that. Yes, they're doing it to make a difference. Here we go. Normal applause. <laughs> but recognize your people. Right. Recognize the things that they do. Uh, that's the first part of it. Cause you start off on a positive note. Let's say I have, to, we're going to go to, a, I'm going to a recap meeting, uh, next week for the, the, the conference we just did yesterday. We're not going to start out that meeting with, Hey guys, here's all the things we did wrong. Okay. All right. Like I'm not going to start out with that first. It's going to start out with, Hey, let's recognize all the volunteers. Let's recognize and go through that. Then we get into the information side of the meeting, right? The information side of the meeting. Oops, sorry. <clears throat> information side of the meeting, uh, any information that you have. So again, to use the same kind of example, if we were doing an event, we're going to go through the data of the event. Here's what we have. We had 150 people register for the event. Uh, 127 showed up, uh, you know, it's typically 10%. Here's what we have. Here's what we have from the sponsors. We had this many sponsors, 110% of them showed up. That's great to plan for for future events. And let's also look at the surveys and see what some of the feedback was uh, that we got. And then let's get some information from the different members on the committee, right? Have it be organized. Go in with an agenda, stick to your agenda, make sure you don't have people that are trying to, which could be me sometimes, uh, you know, sidetrack, sidetrack you, be efficient in that meeting. And then at the end, uh, motivation. Right at the end, it might be, hey, guys, uh, I mean, this is great. Our, we had such a great event. Let's break records for next year. And actually, the best time to sell tickets uh, to a conference is when the people leave that conference, right? When it's fresh in their mind, give them like an early, early, early bird ticket price uh, so you can pre-sell tickets because if they had a good experience and it's fresh in mind, boom, let's do that, right? Or let's get a sponsorship lined up with, you know, first come, first serve on the higher levels, right? Let's, let's motivate them, uh, inspire them in some way and send them on their way. 
but don't let the meeting drag on. Don't be like, is there anything else we should be talking about? What do you guys think? You know, you're always going to have that high eye in the group that just loves the social aspect of it and they want to just keep hanging out. And I'm going, are we done? 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 Can we go? Can we go? Okay, be respectful of people's time. That's your rim. Rim, recognition, information, motivation. <laughs> Hold on. I'm going to post on LinkedIn. There we go. All right. So, again, if, if you guys have questions as we go, please put it in the chat. There's a bunch of you watching brand new live, live and in person. We appreciate you. So, nonverbal communication is so important, right? And let me just kind of go back there. If, if I come back here for a second. Right. If I say to you guys, like, hey, guys, I'm really excited to be here today uh, with my arms at my side or if this if there was a podium here and I'm grasping it like this white knuckle going, I'm really excited to be here today. Uh, I, I, I'm we love that we're supporting this event. OK, I could do that or I can go. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. This is Jeremiah's J. Man Monero. And I'm excited to be here today. Right. That's uh, that's body language that demonstrates my excitement. Okay. So there's so many different things that you can do. And, um, I, I was talking about it this week. Go back and watch Chris Farley. One of the best physical comedians you'll ever see. The body language tells a story. Uh, who was the other person? That I love this Salvatore. Just one second. It is do 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 Salvatore Maniscalco. What is it? Sebastian. Sorry. Sebastian Maniscalco. Yeah. I don't know why I always forget his name, but like when he tells the story, he almost acts it out. Right. When he tells the story, he almost act, he, he like acts it out. And so that like the nonverbal side of it, or if I'm saying to you, you know, let's, let's connect the dots today. Let's bring it, bring everything together. Right. Or if I say, man, I pulled the car over. See what I did? Pulled the car over. I get out of the car. Act it out. That's that nonverbal communication is, is so important because 65% of what we do is nonverbal. Like when people go, I'm really excited. Well, you know what? You should tell your face that you're excited. Uh, face, facial gestures, voice inflections are important. Uh, and then also what people don't think about your clothing, your body posture, and your eye contact, right? Sometimes... I'm sending a different message with my clothing could be a distraction or my body posture or my eye contact, right? I can say, oh man, guys, hey, I'm really excited to be here today. And it really is just, I'm super nervous and I don't want to make eye contact because making eye contact with you makes me nervous. But con you know, eye contact with people as you, depending on, this, on the stage, right? If I, if I was in a room of 500 people, I am going to make eye contact with groups or sections of people at a time. If I'm in a smaller setting of 15 people, then it's very easy to go one person. And I'm not going to go in an order, one person, two people, three people, like that. Like I'm going to randomly kind of, because then you're connecting with the audience, right? <laughs> I like the upper right one there, power of nonverbal. All right, do's and don'ts. So do use body language to make a point. Like I, I kind of just demonstrated that to you. Uh, but it's very important, right? When you're coming in and you're welcoming and I'm going to go back over here again. I really need my, my stream deck. I feel lost without it You're coming in here and I'm like, everybody, good morning. Welcome. Good morning. Welcome. So happy that you guys are here with me today. Okay. Very different than hiding behind the lectern and going, I can see if I was down here. Hey everybody. I'm really happy for you guys to be here today. Very different. Very different experience. It's it's all in the details. And and really, uh, what can help you tremendously with this is have a friend of yours, every time you have the opportunity to speak, have them record you. Because there's going to be little things that you do that you're not going to be aware of. Little little things. And we're going to kind of dive even deeper with that right, right now. Don't fidget. Um, and I'll give you a couple different examples of this. Guys with change and keys in your pocket, you will fidget and like 
it looks like you're playing pocket pool, right? You put your hand in your pocket, you're fidgeting with your keys, and it's just a nervous kind of a twitch. Uh, pens, guys and gals are, are famous for that. You have a pen in your hand, you're going click, 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 until I'm like, stop it, please. Okay. Or uh, if you have, some of you have wedding rings that might be a little bit loose, you flip it like that, or you have bracelets or bangles that you just go like this as you're getting nervous. Or guys, the worst one for me is when you have a, a, a watch that doesn't fit right, take a couple links out, make that bad boy fit nice and tight. Um, but you go like this, and you keep going like that and sliding it back down because it's sliding up as, as you're speaking. All of those fidgets are a distraction, and they'll take away from your message, okay? Don't slouch. Sounds easy enough, but again, if I'm, if I'm like this and I'm like, hey, guys, like just... Big difference, okay? Posture up, posture up, baby, posture up. Even if you're, if you do have to stand at a lectern, and I don't think there's any scenario where you have to stand at a, at, at and we call it a lectern, not, not a podium, uh, that you have to stand there. And actually, when I do the setup for events, I don't even want to have one on the stage. I want it off stage, or I want it set back from the edge of the stage because it can block visually from some of the people in the audience seeing the speaker, okay? Don't hide behind the lectern like that. And do engage the audience, right? So a good way, uh, you ask a question. Don't fill the, the gap with more words. If I say, hey guys, look it. Uh, you know, what's one thing that you wanna do better in when, when it comes to public speaking? See, the silence will bring a response. Okay, do's and don'ts. As you look at this, do you use body language to make a point. Don't fidget. Use appropriate posture. Use a podium. But don't use a podium as a crutch. Do engage your audience when appropriate, but don't rely solely on your materials. So if I was in person and I was like, uh, don't do use body language. Don't fidget. You've seen this. We call that death by PowerPoint. Uh, your slides should also not be all words. Right? There should be more image-based. There are times when you're giving what we call a course in a box or a presentation in a box that you're not allowed to modify as much as it might hurt your soul, and then you got to have to just black out the screen every once in a while, bring it to more group activities, bring it to you uh, as the primary speaker, depending whether you're in person or online. <clears throat> Are you guys still there? If you're still there, somebody comment something because it shows there's a bunch of you that are watching, but I'm not getting any kind of engagement. So uh, just tell me whether you prefer coffee or tea, and I'll know that you're still there. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Cool. I'm not getting anything. There we go. Hey, all right. Thank you, James. I'm here. All right, coffee. Sweet. You're going to like, here's my, my cup for the day. Coffee is for closers. Okay, so impromptu speaking. We have so many opportunities for this, right? As you're at anywhere in public, anytime, there's an opportunity for you to speak, right? There's an opportunity for you to, you know, if some here, we're going to kind of go through it, but your answer should always be yes. Like if you're a little bit nervous and apprehensive, like, uh, I don't know. Somebody says, how's the market? Hey, do you want to talk on the real estate market? Hell yes. Yes, I do. Yes, yes, yes. My answer will always be yes. But here are some examples, right? Introducing yourself at networking events, whether that's a business networking or real estate networking, because there still are opportunities to meet people from uh, outside your real estate sphere, if you will, right? Filling in for a late speaker. You might be somewhere and they're like, Jay, uh, uh, Brian, uh, Michael, uh, Budu Khan, uh, Chris, Chris Ann, Shay. Okay, uh, we, a speaker's not here yet. Can you go in and just talk to about, you know, for 10 minutes? What do you want me to talk about? Anything for 10 minutes. Okay, great. I will grab that mic. I will get up there and I will talk about something for 10 minutes. I will engage the audience, but it's your opportunity to shine. You know, you may not have another opportunity like that. They could be few and far between, but the more you put yourself in those public situations and the better prepared you are, the more likely it is to happen, All right? You're asked to give a toast at a, at a party. Again, you could always go, here, here, bing, 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 
I have a toast. And you're going to say something profound. Every wedding you go to, you could say that, right? Uh, just make sure you don't have a couple too many cocktails. Uh, you asked a question you did not prepare for while on a panel. I never want to know the questions while I'm on a panel. There's some people that are like, I need to know every question so they can prepare their responses. No, I don't. Okay, job interview questions. Hopefully you guys don't need that. You're interviewed by a reporter. This is fantastic. Uh, we have a whole different spokesperson training on that. That's really great. You get pulled into a meeting to give an update. There's an unexpected pushback in your ideas at a meeting. You say goodbye speech to a party employee. Uh, your college refers to you in the middle of a presentation for input. This could be any, any kind of event that you attend, right? Because I would do this and I'd say, you know, I'm always like pulling the audience. Hey, hey, Budu, tell me about the mortgage rates and, and how that's affecting your, your prequels that you're getting. And Budu's going to go, give me that mic, Jay. And he's going to see his, that's his opportunity to shine. Okay. Stick to the truth, share from your personal experience and practice out loud. And what I mean by share from personal experience, it's like we have things that happen to us every day. Uh, some of you may have heard, like I have a signature story I tell about goals, but it's goals are like slippery chicken. Right. And then I tell the story of like how I went, I was in the Chick-fil-A line and then my, my chicken slid off my bread and the bread went in between my console and my seat and I still ate it. Okay, I'm gonna, this is short, very short. I'm not telling the whole story to you guys. I still ate it, but I said goals are like slippery chicken because our goals don't always start out the way we seem, but when you stay committed, you're going to follow it through to the end. <laughs> okay, that crunchy chicken sandwich was uh, not what I expected it to be, but I was committed to my goals. The fat method of better improvisation. Number one, feel. Express your feeling, feeling about the topic. Somebody might ask you, oh, how do you feel about the real estate market? Woo! Oh, I'm glad you asked that. I was super excited. There are some incredible opportunities uh, in the real estate market, right? Recently, we were working with a with a seller who didn't want to sell six months ago because they didn't know where they were going to go. But guess what? We were able to find them the home of their dreams on the water that they've always hoped for and help them make a move. So the real estate market, there's incredible opportunities for sellers, but also for buyers and sellers that are buying. See, when you think about real estate, think about the Monero team. We're your architects of the American dream. See, so I tied it back to a story. And again, I'm just improv improvising for you guys right now. But all of you have a relevant story, regardless of the topic. And sometimes it takes you just, we're, see, we're saying, tying back the story. Like, you all have a story. It's just like, let me figure out how I'm going to tie that story back uh, to the topic that was asked of me. Okay. Thanks, Michael. Mm, 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 mm. The actual speech. If somebody says and tells you that you're going to be delivering a speech, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, you know, whatever it is, the shorter it is, the more you should prepare and actually the more you should memorize. It should be pretty easy for you to memorize a speech of 10 minutes or less, right? Think if you're running for a board position or president or leadership position within any organization, I like to use chamber of commerce because that, that applies to any business person and you get up there and it's you and another person and that other person's at the podium and they're reading the speech like this today. I want to talk to you guys about the blah, 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 blah. and you get up there. No notes whatsoever. Like good morning, everybody. Jeremiah's J man Monero here for your dude. And you go right into it and you walk around and you engage the audience. Look at him like, no brainer. I want that. The, the second guy that was prepared, but here's how it's broken down. There's the opener, the body, the speech, and the conclusion. So the opener draws them in. The opening of your speech should not be a reiteration of your bio or your intro, right? The purpose of a bio that you give to people when they introduce you is to edify who you are. It's for, for to, if depending on what you're speaking on, that you're an authority, that they should pay attention. But then also part of that bio should help you to build rapport. If you've never heard my bio at the end, it says, oh, and his speaking career began in 1987 when he was the ring announcer of his elementary school circus. Ha, ha, ha. Okay? Because at the end, like in the beginning, it talks about you know who I am, what I do, and how how long I've been doing it. But at the end, it ties it back, and it makes them me feel, uh, them feel about me a little bit more approachable. I always got a sense of humor. Maybe I should listen more. Okay, sometimes you guys spend too much time trying to make them impressed with who you are, and that's not what you want. 
Okay, it is partly, but also like in those first minute or so, your goal is to draw them in. Your goal is to build rapport. Your goal is to build compliance, which will get them to listen to you further, right? So I might start with a story. And let's say for this, if I was talking about goals, and I'm going to use that chicken story again. And I said, have you ever had a bad day? How about a bad day and you were extremely hungry? Everybody has had that, right? So now they're listening. Okay, that's me. 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 Right? Rather than saying, uh, have you ever been on a boat in the middle of the ocean in a storm? No. No. No, 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 no. Right? Start with a, a, a story that's universal, that draws them in that identifies a pain point that you might be addressing in your speech and then get into your body. Okay. The body of, of your speech usually has three major parts. And again, if I, let's say if I was talking about the real estate market, uh, it might be first part has to do with sellers. Second part has to do with buyers. Third part might have to do with all consumers. Okay. And so you br break it up into those three, three major parts. And then it's point with, Three sub points so for sellers. I might say sellers can um, can buy now. Sellers can uh, still get record prices for their home, and sellers can uh, make a move to anywhere they want in the world. I don't know. I'm making this up as I go. Then you do three for buyers, and then you do uh, three for the consumers. This keeps it organized. This keeps you from going when you're in the buyer section, going back and talking about sellers keeps it well organized and has a, a very good flow uh, to your actual speech. And then you need to achieve your purpose, whatever that purpose might be. We talked about that in the beginning. Is it to get, to get them to take action? Is it to inspire? Is it to motivate? Is it to educate? Uh, there has to be a purpose and then there should be a conclusion, right? You summarize everything that you're talking about. And then is it amuse, entertain, inspire, motivate, or actuate, get them to take action. So at the end of this, I might be like, you know what? You too can be a, a good speaker. You too are meant to inspire and change lives. You too can do exactly what I'm doing with a little bit of practice, motivation, inspiration, and skill. Okay. And then like, you know, get them to take action. So you got this, the anxiety side of this, it's 10%, you know, really it's 10% what happens to you, 80% uh, of how you react, right? Uh, there are some things. You know, normally I would ask if we were in person, I'd say, what are you guys afraid of? Just put it in the, in the chat right now. Put it in the comments. What are you afraid of when it comes to public speaking? Okay. Here's what I get all the time. Fear of being judged. Fear of making a fool of yourself. Comparing yourself to others. You're scared to not be prepared and you don't have the confidence. A lot of this is in your head. Most of this all of this. Okay. Uh, but you can help yourself be better in all of these things, right? People are going to judge you. Who cares? Okay. Fear of making a fool of yourself. You speak every day. So don't worry about it. Okay. Comparing yourself to others. And I had somebody said this to me earlier this week. They were like, man, I'm really scared if the person in front of me, if, they're, if you're going back to back speeches or somebody speaking in front of you really crushes it. That makes them scared now. They have to be compared to that person. No. When somebody crushes it before me, I'm happy because now the crowd is at an all-time high. All I have to do is keep them there or take them to the next level, right? If somebody bombs in front of you, which somebody would be like, oh, that was great. They really bombed. So if I bomb, we're at the same level. Nah. It's harder to bring people up than it is to bring them down, okay? And stop. you got to change your mindset and saying, well, here's the worst things that can happen. I always say, what if it happens better than you ever imagined? What if you go out there and you crush your speech? What if you go out there and somebody is so inspired that they take action and you change their life? Like that should motivate you, right? Are they doing the two minutes? She'll let you two minutes. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll post a link in the chat. That's actually a behind the scenes look before I went on stage for, uh, I think it was Minneapolis. There's about 500 people in the audience. Okay, so here are some tips to do before. Before you speak, relax. Okay, that's going to be the hardest part for some of you. Uh, some studies have shown, like, if you do power poses, 
I did Superman or Superwoman like this and, and some other, you know, just search up power poses, but know the room. And what I say by know the room is you get there early. I am, I try to get everywhere that I have to speak at least an hour beforehand because if there's anything that I can do to change the room to make it better and make me more comfortable and make it better for engagement, I'm going to do that, okay, if I'm the, the main speaker. Also, know the audience. So research the audience ahead of time. If I'm traveling to speak, I actually listen to the local news to see if anything's, and if there is a paper at my hotel, I'll read the paper too, to see if there's anything uh, that's important or relevant that I need to know, but also will help me to build rapport. Like maybe their local college team just won something big. I might go, I'm like, go user, you, Hoosiers, Hoosiers, <laughs> go Indiana, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, and, and that like that, that right in the beginning will help to build rapport with the audience. But also I like to walk and talk and talk to people beforehand. And I don't I never introduce myself as the speaker. I just kind of like to have conversations because that helps me feel more comfortable and it helps me to know the audience a little better, and when I get up there, they're gonna know me a little bit better. I'm not just a stranger whose nickname is J-Man, who they automatically judged as being uh, pompous because my nickname is J-Man, okay? I'm telling you that happens a lot. You, you guys did it to me, you won't. Uh, some of you will not admit that. So what to wear? Okay, don't dress like you're going to a picnic, but don't dress like you're going to church either. Either Typically, uh, business professionals, good business casual, but one level above your audience is the level uh, or the rule of thumb. So like if you're going to a beach themed uh, conference and everybody's wearing shorts and Hawaiian shirts, don't go in a full out suit. It might be uh, slacks and uh, a polo shirt, right? <clears throat> you see here, it does say, but don't do what I do. Uh, I've developed a unique signature look with t-shirts and the suit, okay? I will never wear jeans uh, you know, unless you're Gary V or somebody who's really famous and can just show up the way they want, uh, I wouldn't do that. Okay. But also don't overdo it on the makeup. Okay. You don't want to have, uh, too much jewelry, anything that shiny ladies are guilty of this quite often. You might have buttons or bracelets or earrings or big hoop earrings, things that are a distraction. Uh, will take away from your message. They stop focusing on, right, and here we have the Mr. T, right? Some of you have the Mr. T starter kit. Uh, keep it at home, okay? Yeah, I'm prou proud of all of your your jewelry, but you don't need to bring it in uh, to, to block out your message, okay? Next level stuff. Just before, uh, there are some breathing exercises that you can do to help you regulate your, but speak clearly, vary the pitch and tone of your voice, vary the pace, speak naturally. Now I have to, on occasion, I speak so fast that when I really want to make a point or if I'm telling a story, or I tell the story of, you know, our, our clients recently who just bought the home of their dreams on the water, I'll slow it down like that and I'll even speak a little bit softer because what are you doing as I do that? You're leaning into the message. Okay, you speak naturally. Filler words, this is gonna be the hardest for all of us. And this is where Mike, when Mike said, uh, you know, he talked about, as I say, ah. Uh, <laughs> he talked about Toastmasters. Toastmasters is great for this because they will track your filler words. So some of you may say, um, some may, may say, so, like, are you with me, right? So you're gonna figure out whatever that is. Uh, uh, and stop using it, okay? Or you might fill it with a different word, but it's just being aware that sometimes when you want to think about what you want to say, you just have to go and pause. You don't have to always fill it with sound, okay? Eye contact is important, but too much eye contact makes you look like a serial killer or a psychopath, okay? Finish on time. What that means is no matter what, no matter if you're, you're not like right now, I'm going to finish on time because I have to do something else at 10 o'clock virtually. I can't go over, but if it was in person, you cut to the finish. If somebody, if there is a timekeeper and you should have somebody keeping time for you, if you're not keeping time for yourself, they do have watches where you can have it vibrate when you have two minutes left or vibrate when you have one minute left. So now, you know, get, 
get to the closing. I don't care what other content you have. It's disrespectful for other speakers to go over. People get annoyed. Uh, nobody cares that you have one more thing to cover because they're going to really be mad about the fact that you went over time and they have to get to an appointment. So that's it, folks. Supreme Confidence is where we're finishing. Keep your stuff organized. Know your key ideas. Research and rehearse. Professionals plan, rehearse, and internalize the conversation. Amateurs go off and try to wing it. Okay, last thing you want to do is wing it because uh, it'll show. Okay, when you go up and you see somebody who's really practiced and polished, and if you've seen, have ever seen me speak, while many of the things that I do may seem like they're off the cuff, I promise you that everything that I do is strategic. Everything that I've planned, every activity that I've planned is for a certain purpose. So I believe in you guys. You just have to believe in yourself to know that you can take your speaking ability to the next level. I want to thank you for being here with me today, guys. And uh, if you got any questions, put it in the comments. Uh, but I'm going to come back over here. And, you know, this was a little bit more presentation style today, but I felt like it was relevant and important. And I want to help you guys be better, do better, and take your business to the next level. So 18 Fridays, Ask the Experts, Anything Meaningful Fridays, every Friday, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Set your freaking alarm already, folks. You don't have to wait for my event. Just know that I'm going to be live on Facebook. I'm going to be live on LinkedIn. I'm going to be live on YouTube. And then we're going to post the playback uh, on our on our IG so you can subscribe there as well. Budu Khan, I miss you, man. Hope to see you soon down there in Long Island doing some mortgages. Uh, I appreciate you all. Let me see. I want to play some music on the way out. What are we going to do? Should we go back to – oh, here. This is called Goliath. You ready? I want all of you to go forward and achieve your public speaking dreams. All right, guys. Today's going to be a good day. Going to be a good day. Today's going to be a good day. Going to be a good day. Get the negativity out of my face. I want positivity in my space. Today's going to be a good day. Going to be a good day. I hope you have a good day. Have a good day. 